All right, welcome back. I'm going to try to do my first supplemental video here, and we're going to focus on Chapter 13, Saving, Investment, and the Financial System. Okay, quick word of wisdom here. This will not replace an entire week of lecture. Um, what I'm basically going to try to do is hit the hot spots um, and try to um, hit maybe some more troublesome areas and give some things, um, some highlights on things I think to be highly uh, important to understand. So welcome to my home office. Um, temporary dry erase board hopefully it doesn't fall over when I start writing on it. Um, but I'm so happy to be bringing you some uh, fresh knowledge here. So make sure you're doing the reading. Okay, make sure you're watching the established videos with the PowerPoint slides because that would be far more comprehensive. Um, so reading those videos, this is a nice supplement. Give yourself plenty of time on the homework. This particular homework is going to be due on Wednesday evening. Again, we're going through the coronavirus, COVID-19, rearranged, everything's online all of a sudden. So um, make sure you are doing all the little things. There really are no shortcuts. So we need you to put your time in. Um, so let's take a look. All right. So this chapter is all about saving investment in the financial system. All right. And um, basically a financial system, as you can read in the definition of the book, is a group of institutions in the economy that help match one person's saving with another person's investment. So normally when I'm teaching this classroom, I'd say, hey, okay, um, I've got this one person on the left-hand side of the classroom um, who uh, needs to borrow money to open up a new business, let's say a cupcake business. Um, and then I've got a dozen or more people on the other side um, that um, have some money they want to save in the bank. They want to collect interest. Um, we're going to talk a lot about interest rate in this chapter. Um, interest is just a price, okay? It's the same thing. In fact, when we graph it here in a little bit, um, it'll go exactly where price does on the graph. It'll just say interest rate. Interest rates are a price you pay to spend money you don't have. So if you borrow money, um, you get to use money you don't have at the moment, um, that's a price you pay to spend money you don't have. It's also, and where I really want to get you in life, is when you have enough discretionary income you can save. Um, it's also where you get paid to forego using your money now. Now, interest rate is your friend. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the next chapter. But um, the price you pay to use money you don't um, have or the price you get um, to... Spend money that you do have that the bank can use to loan out. So how do banks work? Um, they're what's called a financial intermediary. They bring together borrowers and savers. It takes a, a good number of savers um, and a less number of borrowers. You have to have qualified borrowers. You have to, you know, be you have to, you know, determine who's more likely to be able to safely pay them back plus interest. So um, that's how banks make money um, is interest. Um, they bring in. Uh, people's savings and they give them a, an interest rate down here, okay? And then they loan it out to people who are going to pay them back and they charge them an interest rate up here. And the difference between what they pay out to the savers and what they get in from the borrowers is that. They get to keep that. That's what buys marble for their lobby, all right? So always keep that in mind. All right, so... Um, Financial intermediaries, um, they operate in financial markets, financial institutions through which savers can directly provide funds to borrowers. Um, one quick uh, thing besides uh, interest rates that we need to cover is actually the difference between stocks and bonds. Okay, stocks and bonds. So, stocks, you become an owner. It's a, it's a, it's a piece of paper. That gives you partial emphasis on partial. This is a very small ownership in a firm. All right. Gives you partial ownership in a firm. Okay. If you guys see this little glare, it's a skylight I have in my office. So I hopefully think you can see that. Okay. Um, a bond. All right. It's like an I. O U. It's like a small loan. All right. 
We usually call these IOUs. All right, it's an IOU. It's something that is a small loan. So if early on, Apple, okay, um, if you'd have bought Apple stock early on, you would have made a ton of money in a quick period of time. Why? Because you would have been an owner, okay? So stock, the stock market, all right, this is inherently, stocks are inherently high risk, high reward, okay? You can lose everything, and you can make everything, all right? The risk is losing everything. The reward is making a gazillion bucks if you'd have bought Apple really early. Or you could have sold Steve Jobs a bond, which was a small loan, and he would have just paid you that loan back, regardless of his um, ability to pay. So if he'd have become a uber successful person that he did, um, you still would have just gotten back the, ter the terms of the loan. So a bond is inherently low risk, low reward. Low risk, low reward. So uh, bonds are considered safer. All right. But you won't make a ton of money. Okay, whereas stocks, risky, but you know, high risk, but high reward. Okay, so how do you navigate this then in a financial market? Well, in the economy, if you look at it, despite what even's going on right now, okay, despite what's even going on right now um, with the COVID-19 pandemic, um, that's temporary, man. Stocks are on sale, by the way, not time to buy, not to sell. Um, everything's on sale. It's like 50, 40, 50% off. Um, I've been tearing up the stock market. I highly recommend you do the same if you can. Buy stuff you've heard of. Disney, Coca-Cola, Google, Apple, blah, blah, blah. All right. Um, if you look at the, the, the U.S. economy, we start talking about GDP. I'm talking about that in another week. All right. If you look at the value in dollars over time, the stock market does that, right? All right. But on average, I can find my pens here. GDP does this, okay? Stock market is a long-run game, all right? U.S. economy typically grows between 3 to 5% a year. We'll probably see a lower end of that. We may actually see a little bit of recession this year, given what all's happened. Um, but the U.S. economy, on average, grows 3 to 5% a year per year. The problem is when people say, hey, I want to make quick money in the stock market, is they don't know if they're here, 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 or here. They don't know if they're about to go up, if they're about to go down, if they're plateaued, if they're about to go up. They don't know. Okay? You just don't know. But what you do know is over time, that joker is going to go up. So you just got to give it time. All right? You just got to give it time. Um, so the idea is when you are younger, all right? When you're younger and you're looking at time here, you're back here. You have time to let the risk, all right, to inherit the risk to reap the reward. So you have all this time, you know in time you're gonna be down here, all right? But when you retire, you're gonna be up here and you get to keep all this, okay? You get to keep all that in between, okay? But as you age, as you come down here, so over here, your portfolio need to be more stocks. You're younger. But as you transition here, so I'm talking like, you know, 90, 10, all right? But as you transition here, you need, you're older, you need more bonds. Why? Because your retirement account over time, when you start out, you're lucky if like your retirement account when you're young, okay, have like 20K in it, all right? Let that roll, man. Let that roll, all right? As you are in a retirement age, before retirement age even, let's say you've got 500K in there, all right, 500K at retirement age. Do you need to be putting that in the stock market? No, not at all. Why? Because overnight it can become zero, all right? You've seen the stock market just absolutely tank. 
A lot of older folks are losing all their money. Why? Because they have way too much in stocks and not enough in bonds. Okay? Way too much in stocks and not enough in bonds. Sorry, my computer just went to sleep. I didn't think it would do that while I was recording. Give me a second. He's going to get up close and personal with me. A little commercial break. How about that? Thanks, Apple. All right. He's still with me. Thank goodness. Okay? So don't risk it in retirement, man. All right? In re as, you, as you approach, like, from here on out. So, like, 90-10 here. And you get, like, midlife. You're kind of like, you know, 60-40 maybe, depending on your level of risk. You get over here and you're 10-90. You're, you're A little bit in the stock market. But you need lower risk. Why? Because you're about to take all that money out and spend it in retirement. This is a good years, man. Buy yourself a beach house or something. Cool. Is that understood? All right. Great. Like I'm going to get a reply from the computer. Uh, man, I miss having y'all in class. Because like one of y'all would be asleep right now and go over there and mess with you. Um, miss y'all. All right. Um, so let's move on to something else. You know what, tell you what. I think I'm going to break this video up. That way you don't have to watch me clean the board. And we'll come right back um, for another video on another part. Cool? All right.